Good morning, everyone. Nice to have everyone back here in the congregation and talking with everybody. And, and, but now I guess I'm told it's time to get down to business. <laughs> I want to um, say that today's hymns are going to be from the purple hymnal, the Glory to God hymnal. Um, and we're going to start with the um, acknowledge, land acknowledgement for the um, gathering on Abenaki lands. I would like to acknowledge that the First Presbyterian Church of Barrie and many of our homes are located on the unceded and ancestral homes of the Abenaki people. We acknowledge that they are still here, continuing to honor and bring light to their heritage, and that we benefit every day from the theft of their land. Thank you for that, Allison. That was really nice. That's one thing I like about coming to church after 
whatever goes on during the week and we, we're hectic and we're just wondering, you know, where am I going to fit all this in? It's nice to come to church, sit in the pews, have a chance to just relax, clear your thoughts, take in the beautiful music and ground yourself so that you're ready to receive God's word and to open yourself up. And I, I really needed that this week and I thank you very much. I want to thank, welcome everybody for those that are here in the congregation and those on Zoom. It's good to see so many people on Zoom. Um, and um, so now we'll go into the call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord. Let us worship God. Uh, that is from the um, Psalm 98, so if you want to review it later, you certainly can. Um, opening hymn is number 12, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <laughs> It's a common word that we find in our bulletin each week, this confession, this prayer of confession. But what are we confessing? And why do we as Presbyterians do it? Well, our relationship with God is different than some other Catholic churches, some other Christian churches in that when we talk to God, we talk directly to God. We don't have an intermediary say, please tell God this. We don't have to sit with a pastor or a priest or a lay leader and say, would you please intercede for me with God? We have a personal relationship with God. And because we know God, we want to live better lives. 
but we've got to, maybe it should be prayer of admission. We admit that uh, we haven't been the perfect people that we think we are. Because it's only by admitting to God who we are that we can seek his forgiveness and get even better. So let us join together in the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Dear God, we have tried to be so wise, but our wisdom has failed us under strain. We have tried to be so righteous, but the moment we have found it unpopular, we have cast our righteousness aside like a coat. We've tried to be loving, but our love has always turned itself into self-love. We've tried to be loyal, but the moment troubles and tribulations have come upon us, we have forgotten our loyalty and demanded that you tell us why. Grant us thy forgiveness, O Lord, and create in us clean, new, and loving hearts. For Jesus' sake, amen. As we confess or admit our shortcomings to God, God offers us the assurance that in Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and was raised to show us the power of God's love, that love that conquers the power of sin, we are forgiven and we are loved regardless of what we have done in the past. Amen. Now, in the name of Jesus, let us pass the peace. Don't pass the germs, but pass the peace with friends, family, and other members of the congregation. listening time and we'll start with the prayer for illumination let us pray Lord open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that is the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed we may hear anew what you say to us today amen amen Those who are paying careful attention will note that there's only one scripture listed in the bulletin this morning. That's from the New Testament, from 1 Peter. But I did want to share a reading as well from the Old Testament, from Ecclesiastes. And my apologies, these are changed a little bit, done by Pete Seeger. I won't sing it like the who did. I won't sing it, period. But this reading from Ecclesiastes. To everything, turn, 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 there is a season. Turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to reap. A time to kill, a time to heal. 
the time to laugh, the time to weep. Because to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to build up and a time to break down. A time to dance, a time to mourn. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. To everything, turn, 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 there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time for war, a time of peace. A time of love, a time of hate. A time you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. To everything, turn, 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 there is a season. Turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to gain, a time to lose. A time to rend, a time to sow. A time to love, a time to hate. A time of peace, I swear it's not too late. And from the first chapter of First Peter. What a God we have and how fortunate we are to have him, this father of our master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. And Jesus wraps this all up. It's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, but you love him. You still don't see him, but you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking for, total salvation. May God bless our understanding this reading from its holy word. New and improved. Now it's even bigger and better than ever. Now with even more in the bottle than before. You liked our shampoo before. You'll love our new formula with even more cleaning power. For 2023, you could have a new body with our food mail right to your door. It's a new year. Everything's going to be wonderful, bigger, better than ever before. You've heard it all before, I'm sure. New is better. I, like my wife, has a very strange memory. I have memories of things that happened when I was two years old. My mother gives me grief about it. It's like I'm not supposed to remember what she did then. I, my wife has a memory of, oh, today's the date I had my left ear pierced on such and such a street in this town. How many years ago was this? Well, today's the anniversary of my first haircut. Yeah, I, come on. I mean, Today's the anniversary of this. I, she has an anniversary for every day of the year. She has an amazing memory. But our memories are built differently. And it's a source of amazement to me how memories and experiences from our early lives can be responsible for the senses and emotions for the remainder of our years. I have vivid memories of my years early in grade school. I remember kindergarten. Can you remember the elation we experienced when, when the school year would come to an end and the prospect of a fun summer vacation loomed ahead? You recall the freedom you felt? 
when that school bell rang for the final time in the late spring and you could run to your heart's content with your head just filled with plans for being outdoors, not having to sit at a desk again for months. It was a grand time. A few years ago, I, I came face to face with an emotion that's always bothered me, it, one that comes upon me in early fall. I get sad in early fall. I mean, it's beautiful weather, you've got the leaves in full color, but I get sad. And I, even as an adult getting sad, I couldn't understand why. And one day it dawned on me that just maybe the source of my disquiet had its roots in grade school years when fall meant that the summer of freedom was behind us. We have to go back to studies, homework, and a set schedule of getting up, attending class, watching the days shorten. Those were the times when the worst thing your mother could possibly say to you was, go outside and play. Yay! That was just great. This, by the same token, uh, vivid grade school memories that I have include rushing back to school after Christmas vacation. That's what we still called it then was Christmas. We didn't have to call it holiday or midwinter break. After Christmas vacation. Rushing back to school and meeting your friends on the playground. What did you get for Christmas? Guess what I got for Christmas? And if appropriate, if perfect, it was Look what I got for Christmas. It was a time in our lives when receiving new things, getting gifts, seemed to be the most important part of the holidays. It would still be some time before we learned that giving could be more fulfilling than receiving. That Christmas season was much more about the gifts we shared than about who gave us what. And even today as we have watched the Magi make the trek across the wilderness to share their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh with a Christ child. But we were kids. And that's how we looked at Christmas. What new things would we get? the time of our lives when we were the center of the universe. Still swear there are some people who think that, but we believed we were the center of the universe. Everything revolved around us. It was, uh, for the most part, a time of innocence, a time when everything seemed so simple. Our minds can trick us and paint that time of our lives as something different maybe from what it really was. We have a tendency to remember the fun things. Our minds filtering out incidents, uh, occasions that made us sad or uncomfortable. But for the most part, Christmas was one of those fun things. And good thing for us, it played out year after year after year. So, we celebrated another Christmas, and we're still probably wishing people we haven't seen, wishing them a happy new year. Out with the old, in with the new. Do you make New Year's resolutions? You know, turn over a, a new leaf. You know where the tur turn over a new leaf comes from? Books. The pages of books used to be called leaves. And when you turn over a new leaf, you're going on to something new. I don't make New Year's resolutions. I did when I was younger. And they'd last maybe 12 or 14 hours. <laughs> the resolutions I've made in my adult life, I make when I moved to understand that it's time now to do it. And when you're moved it that way, it's a little, a little easier to keep them. So 
So it's time to say goodbye to the old year and turn to 2023. If you pay attention to what happens this time of year, it seems as though news agencies, companies are happy to tell us what the high points were of the year we just went through. And quite often, that past, that review seems to be full of sorrowful things, terrible things that happened. But we're told the future, the future can be new and better. They list on CNN, people we've lost in 2022. It's a time for reflecting. It's a time for thinking about what's ahead, who's going to be here. It seems a lot more pessimistic than our childhood attitude, doesn't it? The big stories we're reminded about usually include natural disasters, shootings, <laughs> or a pandemic. And they are most often bad news. They're constantly telling us what we can look forward to in the new year. Why is it, do you suppose, that the past, past seems to be bad and the future is always good? We, uh, we hit that dividing line in our calendar at 11.59 p.m. on December 31st between past and future, a formal marking of a decision. But do the two, the past and the future, have to be so completely independent of each other? Does it have to be one or the other? We do that a lot in our lives, don't we? It's either this or that. Where's the compromise? Where, where's one depending on the other? Where's one supporting the other? Because it, it only makes sense that the future is going to become the past at some point. The past is responsible for what the future holds. The future is based on the past. No, I'm not going to get into any abstract thinking here or science fiction. I'm not going to try to tell you about a, a terror in the space-time continuum or something else you might find in Star Trek. Just seeing that, saying that one leads to the other, you can't have one without the other. We need the past in order to have the future, in order to want what is new, to deal what is new. Our experiences cause us and make us react the way we did. As we move ahead, they will continue to motivate us. So what has happened before is perhaps best expressed when Peter writes, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. So when Peter turns to the future from the past and it shows us what a a great gift we've been given. That, there's that giving thing again. God has given us new birth. And it's not a one-time deal either. We don't unwrap that gift under the tree on Christmas morning, smile, and then leave it somewhere. It is the gift that keeps on giving. It's a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There are lots of gifts from God. The gift of grace, the gift of forgiveness, and that's something we ask for. We'll put it on our Christmas list and put it on our prayer list. We confess and ask for forgiveness. But this one, this salvation of our souls is the greatest gift of all. To everything, there is a season. Turn, turn, turn. For our lives to be complete, 
we need to recognize that there's an importance in, in including the facts and the facets of our existence. In order to appreciate the new, we must have appreciate what's come before. Yes, there's a time for everything. But this gift to humanity from God is timeless. And it's promised to us as an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. It's a gift. Sherry Weber Nicholson wrote, gifts by their very nature must come from a source beyond our control. Otherwise, they are not gifts, but things taken under duress. Well, this is certainly a gift coming from a source beyond our control. But will we open it? Will we recognize it as what it is being given to us? What sort of fanfare and noise will accompany this gift? How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. I would humbly suggest that the season for this promise of everlasting life, this gift of salvation, is always and, it's, and forever. If we but open our eyes to receive it. Amen. Our next hymn is number 686, God of Our Life. Now is time for announcements. Um, I'd like to start out with announcements that um, next Saturday we will be uh, having 
um, Doris Town's service will be here at the church at 11 o'clock. Uh, following the service, there will be a reception downstairs. Um, so um, I just, uh, any of those who would like to bring some finger desserts or hors d'oeuvres or whatever to help out uh, in, in the reception, uh, more than welcome. Um, are there any other announcements? Yes. So uh, this might be one of the last times I'll be having to do a transition uh, announcement for a little while. Um, our new interim minister, Reverend Brett, is on his way. Uh, he'll be here moving in on Tuesday, and um, we'll be glad to see him arrive. I think many of us that have been helping with leadership responsibilities, there's quite a few, who are eager to have someone else kind of take over a little bit of those responsibilities. It's been a while. Um, Reverend Brett has been already participating in some meetings last week he met with deacons and outreach uh, virtually and um, he's been working with the worship committee so I'll just give you a little word to the wise. They expect some changes in worship. Um, maybe not so much next week but in the weeks to come it, um, in his wisdom, as many experienced, um, experiences he's led with transitions, that's one of the things he thinks really helps congregations move on, is to make some changes in how we do worship as a way to kind of make a break from the past and move to the future, kind of in line with Chris's message today. So um, he'll be leading our worship next Sunday, and there's a copy hour as afterwards, so welcome him, and um, I'm sure we'll all be happy to meet him and get to know him as he leads us through this process. I think that's it. And there's a nice little bio that he provided in the bulletin if you haven't noticed it. And I think Diane's got a few others. So in addition to the transition work, we have our third session of the mission study. So I had, there have been a couple of changes in the dates and things. Wednesday morning is still occurring in person here from 10 to 11.30. Uh, so that one is one session you can attend. The Zoom group will meet on Thursday night at, from 6.30 to 8. So use the meditation link for that if you, uh, if that works better for your schedule. And then next Sunday, we will have another in-person opportunity. We will do it at noon so that it gives us that time to celebrate with Brett as he is here. Um, but if that, that part of the schedule works better for you, then we will do that. The next thing I need to um, ask about is it's, um, I would like to have a five minute, just quick touching base with the nominating committee. And so I put that out there. Maybe that's kind of your bad news. Here's your good news. I'm going to let you know who that involves. So, um, so Rachel Hickory is on the committee. Carolyn Tucker is on the committee. John Quinlan, you're on that committee. Peg, you're on that committee. Leora, who I don't believe is here and I don't see on Zoom, but I'll touch base. Doris Portalupi. You are um, on the committee, and Catherine, you are on the committee. Now, I know we have some brunches that we have to get people to and that, so this is just basically to touch base. And the really good news about that is if you're on the committee, then you can control whether or not you get nominated for those openings that we have. So. So feel free. We are in good shape for our elders, uh, but it is with our deacons that we need to be looking for um, some replacements. So please uh, just join me in the front of the congregation for about five minutes as we touch base and then go out in our world. One day I won't feel the need to come up here and talk. 
Um, I'm up here to uh, let all of you know in the congregation that we have poinsettias out in the entry. Uh, people have not picked them up and we need to move them along. So if you would enjoy, they're really beautiful. If you would enjoy having a poinsettia, please pick one up and take it home with you tonight um, so that it will have a nice new place to live. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Any, are there any other announcements? Okay, then we'll move on. Thank you. First in our prayers today will be prayers of thanks because Kathy Jamison's brave enough to come in on her birthday. <laughs> Maybe you could blow out the candles at the end of the service. <laughs> but Barb, I don't see John here. Are you hiding him because of what we might do to John Killian on his birthday? <laughs> prayers of thanks for birthdays for both of them. Do we have other prayers that people would like to share today? Dottie. Um, prayers for the family of Doris Cameron and then also special prayers for Sean, her granddaughter, Sean Cheever, the great grandson, Sawyer Cheever, as um, they move forward with their lives. Prayers for the family of Doris Town, particularly for Sean Cheever and her child as they move on with their lives without Grandma Doris. Lord in mercy, hear our prayers. Mrs. Furmeister. Um, prayers for my sister's husband, his brother died two days before Christmas. Uh, the prayers for Greg family. And the prayers for my brother who had a heart procedure on Tuesday that didn't work, so they had to repeat it. Prayers for my brother getting his heart back to normal. 
prayers for Janet's brother who had a heart procedure and was told it didn't go as planned and they need to do it again. And for the family of Greg Hill, Janet's brother-in-law whose brother died two days before Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there others? Josh, are you waving? Okay. <laughs> Sylvia. I would like to hear some Thanksgiving that this afternoon, my sister Cindy and her family and my sister Judy and, and her husband will be joining us for our Christmas gathering finally. Ah. In this case, the best, the best laid plans of man. It took a while, but they're great. great. Prayers of thanks for the holiday family gathering at Sylvia's family, which is finally going to occur this afternoon. And may all of God's people say, amen. Prayers Janet. Prayers of thanksgiving for your great niece being born on Friday. Oh, that's right. I had a great niece born on Friday. <laughs> Prayers of thanksgiving for her safe arrival. Any others? Each week we um, pray for a different person or family in our church, and this week we invite you to keep in your prayers Robert McLeod and his family. Uh, gracious God, we give thanks for them and their presence in the community and for what they've done for us in the congregation. Hold them in the, hold them in the palm of your hands and let them feel your love. Give them the wisdom and strength to do your will and faith and courage to face what other challenges may arise. And as part of the Congregational Presbyterian Church and other ministries within the Presbytery of Northern New England, each week we ask to keep one of the Presbytery's participants in our thoughts and prayers. This week, we pray for the Leeds Community Church in Leeds, Maine, and the Reverend Steve Allman. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of grace, God of glory, for all the gifts you bestow upon us, we give you thanks. Open our eyes to what we have. Enable us to realize how fortunate we are and to give thanks. We pray for those who are having a difficult time now because of death, for the family of Doris Town, for so many grandchildren, such a big family, we pray that you will take her into heaven and keep her safe there with you. We give you thanks for new birth, the promise of new life in this new year. We pray that you will be with our elected officials, that you will open their eyes to what needs to be done and inspire them to work together to accomplish the tasks for which we had hoped to elect them. We pray for the leaders of the First Presbyterian Church of Barry as we enter a new chapter in our life and we look ahead Enable us to do that with hope in our hearts. Enable us to do that hand in hand and inspire our congregation as we look into the new year and a new future for us. We praise you, we thank you. We ask for your intervention in places of war, places of strife, that you may open eyes to those involved. They may realize that what they're accomplishing is absolutely nothing. For all this, we 
give you thanks and ask your help. And we say this praying in the name of Jesus Christ who taught his disciples so many years ago and taught us to pray today, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A closing hymn is number 150, As With Gladness, Men of Old. And now uh, we throw open our doors to God and we discover at that same moment that the Lord has opened the door for us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped we might stand, out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise anew, amen.
Thank you, Allison, for turn, turn, turn. That wasn't planned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>